What up? What up? What up? Welcome back to First Strike. Feels like we haven't even left, and we're excited about UFC Vegas 96 coming at you guys. Cannoneer Baralo. Gonna be a battle here. A couple cancellations, a couple last minute entries, but you always know you got the apex predators of the octagon to help guide you to that early cash, beating line moves, breaking down fights, doing all the work so you can get paid and have a successful Saturday. And it's going to be a successful Saturday. We're going to pop off at 7 p.m. Y'all already know how we do on the regular, but I got the fellas here. Let's get them to do some. Let's get to work here. Subhuman Gaucho, MMA Jeff. Happy Hump Day, Wednesday, August 21st. Sub, how we doing? Doing great, man. Uh, looking forward to this weekend. I think we have a week off after this Saturday before we go into a long string of UFC events. So I take advantage this Saturday. We'll have Dana White Contender Series Tuesday. Lots of fights to look forward to here. How we doing, Jeff? Looking forward to the card as always. As you had mentioned, we got a week off for the holiday. We get to celebrate for a week, and then we roll heavy with some uh, several weekends in a row, which I am excited for. Uh, this is looking to be a, an interesting card, exciting card. Hopefully we get a lot of violence. I always like the violence, like most of us do. But, uh, yeah, excited. We got, I believe, 11 fights on the card. We'll see what happens after weigh-in. And Like Mike said, there's a couple that have been uh, dropped off or swapped out, but we got 11 officials at this point, I believe. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, action-packed. What gets super exciting about violence means we have a lot of opportunities for props and those lead to big paydays. So let's keep our fingers crossed for that this weekend. And we got to get to work boys. Let's jump into this first fight. Jeff's going to open the card up for us. He's going to talk about a little Jose number six ranked fighter, 11 and three number 53, Zach Reese at seven and one. But one of these guys is a regional punching bag. Jeff, does the regional punching bag find a way to show everybody the goods? What do you think about this fight? How are we getting paid? I'll tell you, Reese is a great striker. Uh, he's won 70% of his fights by KO. Uh, he's, he, you know, he came in his first week or his first uh, UFC fight, uh, I believe it was November, December of last year, and he got touched up by Cody Brundage uh, within two minutes of the first round. So we didn't get a real good look at him against UFC caliber fighters. Um, you know, he came back and he pops Marquez. 20 seconds into the first round. So again, it's, you know, he likes to strike. Um, he can get, he can get touched up, but uh, he likes to keep things on the feet, punch into back you against the cage and then kind of finish you from there. Uh, makes this fight exciting to me is it's kind of a striker versus a grappler, but Medina's a, he's, you know, he's a little chubby for the, uh, for the weight class. He drops some weight. Um, he likes to take you down and uh, get on top ground and pound. He's making his debut in the UFC after uh Losing the contender series by unanimous decision to uh, Mag Maga Magabad, I'm sorry. And uh, you know Dana doesn't like to give those contracts out after you lose, especially if you lose by unanimous decision. But I think he got the contract because of his toughness. Uh, he's won five of his last seven fights by KO. Um, he's as you had mentioned, these these regional guys they uh, they they beat up a lot of guys that don't necessarily belong in the UFC or MMA in general. So they get these significant record six seven eight no oh, and then they come in the ufc and get touched up however reese he uh you know he's one and one in the ufc so he, he doesn't have that ufc experience either but you know going looking back at some tape on reese all you can see is highlight reels the, the guys finished all his regional fights within like 180 seconds or something ridiculous like that um you know medina's gonna try to take him down reese likes to he likes his jujitsu and he's got those long limbs. So I don't, you know, unless uh, Medina is going to ground and pound him on top, I think uh, Reese is going to keep this one on the feet. And I think he's going to, he's going to go for the kill. I like the round one. I like the under one and a half, but I'm going to give myself a little more wiggle room. Either of these guys can KO. I'm going to go with fight ends by KO at minus 140. I like it, Jeff. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think that Medina's going to look like a heavy bag in this one. It's going to be a lot of Reese teeing off. I doubt it leaves the first, to be honest with you. Um, let's move on. This is a fun one here. We've got Slava Claus versus James Lantop. Where are you going in this one, Mike? Vyacheslav Borshev here uh, trying to go on Slava Claus. They ought to call him Santa Claus with the way this guy gives up on fights. And then you look at a 
not a debutante here, but a gentleman and James Lontop making a second UFC premiere. And a couple of things I looked at with this one here, an eight year age difference between these two guys is ridiculous. And we were talking earlier about this thing. We might have to check Slava Claus birth certificate because there might have been a little forgery coming out of Russia. That guy looks older than dirt. On the flip side, though, we got a nice young up and comer fighting out of Peru. Definitely combat in his history, uh, a storied career down there in the FFC. And now he's coming again back into uh, fight number two. He lost his first fight. His debut, the debutante, coming out of the Dana White Contender Series, did win that Contender Series by a unanimous decision. Showed the chops. His technical proficiency was there. But he takes the L. Not all L's considered the same, I think, in this case. I got three different rescheduled fighters to get out there and make his debut. Lando Venata. He's got Gabe Green. Chris Padilla. Every one of those guys backs out, and he's got to go out there, and he's forced to take uh, a last kind of second change out from a gentleman that likes to go out and sub. He takes the L. He gets rear naked choked. But if you look at his career, he's got seven knockouts. He's one in two career submissions. So he's lost overall. But again, we just talked about that UFC entrance here. And on the flip side, Santa Claus struggling one and three in his last four, two and three in his UFC career. And you look at this guy, his notability or his last positive result was a split draw. He wins the first and third round, but he got beat up so good in that second round that I want to say it was a 10, eight judges scorecard situation. He was lucky to come out of that thing with the draw outside of that, a story of losses. We've got line movement alert as well for James Lontop. I think this guy comes in here, shows that he does have the goods. He uses the age to his benefit, tries to take him into the deep waters. Wouldn't be surprised to see that technical proficiency lead to a unanimous decision again. But uh, I like Lontop here. We're getting a great number. Plus 190s, plus 195s are out there. This thing opened at 210, and it's steaming. So you know the deal. We want to make sure we give you guys the best numbers, the best time we can get them. I expect this will change again by showtime. But for now, we're going to lock it in at plus 190. Give me a little on top coming out there, picking up the dub, boys. What do you think about that? I like it. I'm glad you chose that one to break down because I was leaning that direction as well. And uh, we're actually rolling fights two, three, and four in the prelims. Nice. All three of us. Let's go, baby. Don't forget that <laughs> first strike parley. We're rolling with sub. He's going with Jose Nunes versus Jacqueline Cavalcanti. How do you feel, Sub? What are you thinking? All right, let's get right into it. So Josie Nunes, um, she's a big power puncher. Seven KOs in her 10 wins. Probably the slightly more experienced fighter. Well, she is technically the more experienced fighter. Um, I'm going to say probably has the slightly better level of competition. She's got a pretty decent loss on her record to Talia Santos. And uh, she's 3-1 in UFC with the win over Dan Barbosa in her regional scene, who's now in the UFC. So she's got some things going for her, but I really like the Cavalcanti side in this one. Cavalcanti's far more technical. She's got some great footwork. She's much bigger and longer. Seven-inch height advantage, three-inch reach advantage. And she uses that height and reach well. Very good at keeping distance, good footwork. I think that's going to be an enormous problem for Nunes here. You know, Nunes is coming off of a loss to Chelsea Chandler where she had trouble finding Chelsea Chandler, and Chelsea Chandler is nowhere near the level of striking proficiency as somebody like Cavalcanti. And, um, you know, the thing that really got me over on Cavalcanti is if you look at her physique since she has been off, she's been off for nearly a year since her last She's changed dramatically. She looks much different than she did then. During that fight in her UFC debut, she uh, missed weight by four pounds. I don't think that's going to be a problem this time around. She's uh, every month looking better. She had a UFC photo, photo shoot back in February. And even in just those seven months, she's had quite the physical transformation. Transformation. So she is putting in her road work, getting those rounds in. I like her chances here quite a lot. So I'm going to give out two bets here. You know, we talk about that steam. Firstly, Cavalcanti. Parlayed with Zach Reese. Both of these lines have been absolutely getting smashed. I was able to get in a little earlier, but still a minus 125 available for that parlay on DK. And I also want Cavalcanti decision. Much as I think she is going to piece Nunes up here, Nunes is a tough girl. She's never been knocked out. 
So I think this one does go the distance. Um, so, yeah, Cavalcante decision minus 110. All right, so I like it. Going to be fun to get this thing rolling, you guys. There's four plays on three fights. We're going to write down the order when it comes to this UFC card on Saturday. Get these in the prelims. Have a ton of fun for the main events. We appreciate you guys watching what we're doing here at First Strike. You know, trying to give you guys them best bets. Get that money in before those lines move. Get that ability to cook the books. And we'll be back to see you guys live Saturday, August 24th, 7 p.m. pop-off. The big banger before we get a nice little UFC well-deserved break. Appreciate, as always, these gentlemen to the left and the right. Subhuman Gacho MMA Jeff. You guys know where to find us over there at Sports Money. Give you guys all that fun content, all them sports looks to go out there and make that cash. Good luck to your everybody. Make your bets. Have a great time. And we'll see you guys back live Saturday. It's time, baby.